What's good team? Welcome to another Small James coding tutorial where today we're going to be building an orbital loading page. As you can see it here, we have a whole lot of orbiting little planets around any kind of loading screen or a login screen, whatever you want it to be. We're going to be coding this out in vanilla HTML, CSS and JavaScript, but equally the logic translates into JavaScript web frameworks really easily. So if you enjoy the video, don't forget to like, sub and consider hitting the notification bell and let's get into it. So for this tutorial, I'm going to start off in an empty Visual Studio Code editor and I'm inside of my working directory and I'm going to create a new file called index.html and I'm going to use the exclamation key to initialize some boilerplate code within that HTML document. Now, if we just type in James here, we can get this up and running in the browser by dragging it across and here we can see we have James and also inside of this document, I'm just going to open up a style tag select everything and set some default margin to zero default padding to zero and box sizing border box so now if i refresh this page all of our content is in the top left hand corner which is perfect and now at the bottom of this element here i'm just going to create a script which is where we're going to run some javascript and as i mentioned this can pretty easily be translated into react logic but if you'd like to see how that's done leave a comment down below and I'll make a part two video doing the same thing in React. Anywho, inside of our body tag, we're going to start off by creating a div with the ID equal to square. And inside of this div, we're going to have an H1 tag that says orbital. And then under that, we're going to have a paragraph tag that says loading page. So if I save that and refresh this page, here we can see orbital loading page come up. And now we can come back into our style tags inside the head of our document and target our body. We're going to give that a min height of 100% of the view height, a background of hashtag 0F172A, a color of white, a display of flex, a flex direction of column, and finally a padding of 200 pixels, 10 pixels. So that's 200 vertically and 10 horizontally so now we can see it pushes down a little bit so the next thing we're going to do is target our square element just here so we use the pound selector to to style a div with the id equal to square and in here i'm going to give this a default height of 720 pixels and a width of 1280 so perfect for a thumbnail you can obviously set it to whatever you want or make it dynamic and responsive we're also going to give this element a display of flex, a flex direction of column. We're going to justify content center and align items center so that everything is in the middle so that we can see our element just there. We're also going to give this a margin of zero auto so that it self centers itself within the body. And finally, a position of relative for the absolute position elements that we will be having soon. So now that that's all done, we have our square in the middle and we can see that if I set the background here to white, we can see that element showing up on our page just down here. And if I stretch it out, we can see that it naturally centers itself. So now the next thing we're going to do is come into our script tag and this is where we're going to use some JavaScript to dynamically create some elements on the page. So the first thing we're going to do is create a variable called number of planets and I'm going to set that equal to 50. And after defining the number of planets, we're going to have a for loop. So we're going to say let i equal equal zero, i is less than number of planets, i plus plus. So this is going to do a for loop that gradually increments. And in here, what we're going to do is for every index, we're going to append a new element onto the page, which is gonna be another planet. And the way that we're going to do that is by first selecting the square div. So we can say square div is equal to document dot get element by ID. And we can just target the square because we gave it the ID of square. So that's gonna target that element. And now what we want to do is add spans as children up to the number of 50. So we're gonna have 50 spans. So in here, what we can do is say const child to append is equal to document dot create element and in here we can pass in a span and now what we can do is we can say square div dot append child child to append so if this has worked correctly when i refresh this page i would expect to see 
a whole lot of spans, 50 exactly coming afterwards, which is exactly what we get. So now that we have all of these spans, the next thing we can do is target them all. So we're going to say const spans is equal to document.query selector all, just like that. And we're just going to target all of the spans so that we'll get all 50 spans. And now we are going to map over every span. So I'm just going to say spans dot for each. We're going to get the particular span, open that up. And in here, we're going to do a whole lot of logic and add all of our planets. So the spans are going to be rectangles that have a planet placed in the top left hand corner. And then we're going to rotate them centrally. So it looks like the planet is orbiting in a circular nature. So before we do this, we're going to have to assign colors to each span. And I have pre-prepared an array of colors. So I'm just going to copy and paste that in here. So here you can see we have a whole lot of colors. You can find this code in a GitHub repository that's linked in the description below. So be sure to copy that straight from there. And the first thing we're going to do is to create a variation in terms of the radius of each of the planets. We're going to give each of these spans, which is just going to be a rectangle, a slightly different height and width. So the way that we can do that is by calculating a random height equal to math.random times by a value plus a constant. So the constant I'm going to use is 0 0.8 times times by 720. So that just means that the constant height is going to be 80% of the height of the, the element, which we established above. And now I'm going to give it a random variation of about 460. So that means that it could, that means that the height of the element could be anywhere between 720 pixels and 720 plus 460, which is, you know, 1180 or something like that. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the width. So I'm going to calculate a random width is equal to math.random. And in this particular case, the values are going to be 740 plus once again, 0 0.8 times by 128. Now you can obviously have a fiddle with these values. I'm actually just going to change that to 400 for the second and we can see how that looks at the end. And the next thing what we're going to do is assign some styling to the span so we can target it. Here we've got the span just here and we can say dot style dot height is equal to our random height. And then we can do the same for the width. So dot style dot width is equal to random width. Now this isn't quite going to work because currently it's unitless. So what I'm going to do is select the whole thing like this, put some template literal strings around either side. And what that allows me to do is include the JavaScript variable and then add a pixel denominator at the end. So I'm going to do the same thing here, select this. And now we have two pixel values set for the height and width, and this should say width, not widows. So the next thing we're going to do is actually come back up into the style tag because for each of these spans that we can for each of these spans that we're going to be including, we can include some general styles in the CSS sheet. So all of them are going to have a position of absolute. They're all going to have a background of transparent, a top of 50%, a left of 50%. And then what we're going to do is have a transform translate minus 50%, minus 50%. So this is just going to ensure that all of our spans are centered in our square div. And we're also going to target the divs that we're about to create within the spans, which are going to contain the planets themselves. And for them, they're also going to have position of absolute, a top of zero, a left of zero. So they're all in the top left hand corner and they're just going to have a border radius of 50%. So they're perfectly circular. So now if we come down and create these elements, the next thing we can do is calculate a random interval. And this is going to basically be the orbital period. So how long it takes for a, planet to complete an orbital because we don't all want them to travel at the same speed. We want to create some variation. And so for this, I'm going to have math.floor because currently we want it to be an integer value math.random. And now in here, what I'm going to do is add on a mil minimum amount of 10,000 milliseconds. And I'm going to give it a variation of up to 10,000 milliseconds. We're also going to do the exact same thing for the random delay because we want to offset the start. We don't all want them to start at the top left hand corner. We want to offset the delay of some of them so that some start halfway around and we get a good variation. And so for this, I'm going to let them start anywhere within the first loop with the maximum loop time taking approximately 20 seconds. So I'm just going to say math.floor 
math.random times by 20,000, which is gonna be the maximum period. And so we can assign this rotation to our rectangular span by just saying span.style.animation duration is equal to our random interval. And we can say span.style.animation delay is equal to our random delay. So this is gonna offset all of them. Now after we've done that, we can actually create the planet. So for that, I'm gonna create a child node and that is going to be equal to document.create element and that is going to be a div. So it's gonna be a div inside of our span. And as we remember up the top, we gave that a style equal to position, top left, border radius. And so what we're going to do is give the div a radius, which is just gonna be the height and width. And that is going to be math.random. And once again, we're gonna give it a variation of up to 10 pixels and a base radius of two pixels. And now after that, what we can do is say child node dot style dot height is equal to, once again, template literal strings, pass in the div radius just here as pixels. And we can duplicate this for the width also. We're also going to randomly assign the colors. So I'm going to first get the length of the color array is equal to color array dot length. And now I'm going to find a random index by saying random color index is equal to math dot random. What's well, actually going to be math dot floor because it has to be an integer value math dot random just like that times by the length of colors. So that's going to get us our index. And now we can actually get the const color. So we're going to say random color is equal to colors array at that random color index. So now we have the color and if I console.log our random color over here, we should be able to refresh this page and see all of the different colors of our different planets come up. So that's pretty cool. And now what we can do is just assign that color to our child node. So we can say child node dot style dot background is equal to our random color. And what we might also just do is give it a box shadow so that it shines a bit pretty. So we can say child node dot style dot box shadow is equal to zero, zero, one pixel, one pixel. So that's one pixel spread, one pixel blur. And then we can just insert our random color here as well. So random color, just like that. And now that we've defined and styled our child node, we have to actually append it to our span. So we can say span dot append child, just like we did above, and we can add in the child node. So now that's going to create a whole lot of planets. And what I'm going to do is just remove this background white just here so we don't have that background white. And then if I refresh this page, we can see that we have a whole lot of planets showing up in this top hand corner up here. And if I refresh the page, we can get a whole variation just like that. And if I select them, we can see that we have all these different spans out here with the planets in the top hand corner. So now what I want to do is actually add an animation to them. And I can do that by coming up here and coming into the span and we can say animation is, and we're going to give it a name, a duration and a timing function, all that kind of stuff. So let's just click on this. The name is going to be spin. You might remember that we set the duration below, so we don't need that we can have it being a linear kind of speed. So that means it's just constant. And then the last one we just want is infinite so that it goes on forever. And we set the delay down the bottom. So that's all good. And what we want to do is actually define what that spin is here. So we can say keyframes spin, open that up. And we start off by having a value at 0% and then 100%. And we can just say transform we have to make sure that we keep the translate. So we can say translate minus 50%, minus 50%, that has to stay constant. But afterwards we can say rotate zero degrees. And now we can duplicate this line and move it down here and just make sure that this changes to 360 degrees. And so now when I refresh and save this page, we would expect that to start spinning. But the reason it hasn't worked is because where we're adding the delay, we actually have to once again come in and turn these into JavaScript. 
into template literals and give them millisecond amounts so that our computer knows exactly what to do with that. So we can just add the template literal string, add in the random delay, have the dollar sign out the front and just give that a millisecond value. So now when I refresh this, we can see that some of them are taking off. The delay is actually positive, so we wanna swap that to a negative delay. And now we can see that we have them spaced all around our page just here. The next thing we're going to do is just come in and style the text. So for that, I'm going to come over to Google Fonts. Just in here, if I come through to Fonts and open this up, we're going to select Just. And I'm just going to take basically all of their light fonts. just like that. And in the bottom right hand corner, right behind my face here, you can copy this link tag, the whole lot of it. And we can paste it up in the head of the document, the head tag up here underneath the meta information, paste that in just like that. And now in our style tag, we can apply that font family just here to everything. And we can say just and a backup of sans serif. And now I'm going to come into here and target my H1 and give that a font size of seven rem, a font weight of 800. I'm going to target the paragraph and give that a font size of four rem, a font weight of 400. And this one's going to have a line height of one rem. And finally, I'm gonna target the H1 and the P and give them both a position of relative so that I can set the Z index equal to 50, which means that they will always stay above all the planets. And so now if I refresh the page, we can see that here we have our orbital index just like that. We have all of our planets orbiting at different periods, at different radiuses, which looks super pretty. And if I refresh that, we get all different color variations. And honestly, holding refresh, that looks pretty cool. And just like that, that's how you would build out an orbital loading page. You can use this for user logins or any kind of dashboard where the user is just going to be sitting at for a little while and want something pretty to look at. If you've enjoyed the video, please like, sub, consider hitting the notification bell. Let me know in the comments if you want me to make a JavaScript framework equivalent in React. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.